Pat Noda and Kurth are a team that we've seen together before uh, when we were in Somerset. Those guys, I do not believe we're able to make top eight at that tournament, but they're vying for competition here, but they've got to get through three pretty good decks because I know you weren't here with this last match, but most of our viewers were. And Curtis Shue, Gerard Fabio, and Eric Smith, they've got some decks. Well, I heard friend. rumors that uh, Swatkin's deck, the mono black one, which I thought possibly couldn't be beaten, was finally defeated and in style by Gerard Fabiano. Gerard deck. did not have much of a problem. Uh, Abher Abhorrent, uh, excuse me, Overlord is a good magic card. Really good. It is and, very good. And uh, it, it, it dusted him up really good, is what it did. All right. So it looks like we're underway already. You see Fabiano again, he's black blue. Pat Notes deck, he's blue green with a little bit of a black splash. Black Splash for Lash of the Whip and Reaper of the Wilds. And a okay. Freak Amender, too, so this deck looks pretty good. Yeah, it sounds like this has a lot of value in it. Uh, for those of you just joining us, I am with Gerard's deck. Um, Gerard's deck is full of, seems to be full of a lot of strength in the uncommons and rare slots. Uh, he has double Rescue from the Underworld of Keepsake Gorgon, Hythonia the Cruel, and Abhorrent Overlord. Now, Pat Note's deck, again, it's a pretty good blue-green deck. He does have a Thassa, God of the Sea, uh, two copies of Thassa's Bounty. He does have a Horizon Scholar, a Curse of the Swine. He's got some pretty nice cards in his deck. So, Gerard there on Tintin, he played Mod uh, Mogus Marauder, and he did not attack it and give it haste and intimidate. Instead, he left it back to block Agent of Horizons. Uh, Nick Pat Note actually did not make it unblockable, so Gerard was able to let that trade happen. He's going to have to find some way to trade with this next Agent of Horizons, and I'm not sure Nick's going to let this trade happen. He yeah. may activate. See Omen Speaker in there for Nick right now, too, so he already got his scrying over with a couple turns ago. So he's passed those cards, and we'll see what he can find here. He's going to come in with both. Yeah, he actually offers the second Agent of Horizons, this time just for Cavern Lampad. Follows okay. up with Thassa's Emissary. So the Emissary's here, threatening to draw some cards. See, Fabiano does have a removal spell or a blocker to put in front of that bad boy. Yeah, um, this seems to be going in Gerard's direction. It was interesting. Pat Noon had a really aggressive start, and what I thought was a pretty good start, he's trading off his creatures very quickly. Um, and basically turning Gerard's low drops into additional kill spells, which when that happens in a game, that will favor the deck with like the better haymakers. And to me, it seems, it seems very difficult that Nick will be able to out haymaker Gerard. Well, Gerard is going to take four damage right on the chin here, so Pat going to get to draw a card. It doesn't look like Fabiano has much to do. He's going to tap five mana, and he's going to play the Prophet of Kufix, of Krupix, excuse me, and he's going to untap everything. So the Teferi Seedborn Muse is here. And that's a very scary card to play against. Yeah, I mean, after Magic Gerard had no answer to deal with that emissary. Um, Alright. This one I think was worth reading, you would agree? Yeah, this is Hyphonia the Cruel. This card is amazing. Um, it probably, if there is an answer to it, we'll see Pat Node play one. It doesn't have, he's going to flash on this prescient chimera. Maybe, it looks like try to. If you maybe try to swing past it, past it? That's, that's dangerous because. Yeah. Gerard is two lands away from plague winding with this high this Gorgon. Well here's four mana from Pat Note, so he is still aggressive. Oh, and this is why this card shines. This is Curse of the Swine. Mm. Um, That's actually really, really good. So this is the X spell X out X target creatures. You can target your own and one of theirs, which is pretty unique. So he's gonna target his own uh, omen speaker and Gerard's Gorgon. Gonna get two twos on each side and then keep turning sideways. So Curse of the Swine looking very good right now. Yeah, Curse of the Swine is one of those cards that, like I said, originally didn't look all that impressive, but as we've seen it being played, it's just, it's this generic answer to any creature, and there are a lot of creatures, especially in Sealed, that really need answering. We obviously just saw one there. Yeah, Hythonia definitely needs answering. You just see Fabiano's just gonna put the old boar token in front. We should actually stop the game, pause the game here, make sure that Hythonia was exiled. It's exiled part of Curse of the Swine. As Gerard's playing black, that may be pretty relevant. Sure, we'll make sure. We will radio to our spotter, make sure that that is exiled. That is actually super important. Yeah, black has a call. Gerard, we know, has two rescue from the underworld just yep. in his deck alone. So make sure that, unfortunately, Hythonia cannot be, there we go, yep. cannot be rescued. It is taken care of now. Making Curse of the Swine even better, since it exiles and doesn't destroy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the card has been very impressive. I can see a huge amount of power on Pat Noon's side of the table. He has three from the Emissary, two from the Boar, uh, three more from the Chimera. He he's, could play something else, too. Yeah, and so we need to draw all these extra cards. He's connected now. To, he, I mean, that time the Emissary got, chomp, got chomped. As we see the updates here, Smith and Shu are already up a game here against Walter oh. and Kurth. 
But Patnode's going to keep the pressure on. Plays a Centaur Battlemaster. And, and yeah, all, Fabiano's just going to concede. All right, all three games, lightning Jeez. speed here. Five minutes in, we uh, finished <laughs> yeah. all our game ones. Okay, I want to run down quick on the matchups we have across the board. So you have Gerard Fabiano's black, mostly black, somewhat blue deck. He's playing against Nick Patno, who's it looks like he's playing just kind of like a blue-green good stuff. Yeah, again, small splash from black for Lash of the Whip. Oh, so yeah, Lash of the Whip, Reaper of the Wilds, and he has a Farika's Mender as well. So yeah. those are your small black splashes. Okay. Uh, we have Royce Walter versus Curtis Shu. Uh, Curtis Shu is up a game. He is running a blue-green deck. It is pretty much even between blue and green. Um, it's kind of like that good stuff deck again. It's basically got a lot of a lot of heavy hitters. It's got a lot of heavy hitters, two Nimbus Nyads, and double Prophet of Kruthers. Yeah, which is a terrifying card. Royce Walter, he is base black, 10 swamps, 7 planes, Disciple check, excuse me, Gray Merchant check, just one. Um, it's kind of like a white, black, good stuff deck. He does have an abhorrent overlord in his deck. Um, checking for any more big bombs. Three copies of Farika's Cure. Three, three Farika's Cure, three sip of Hemlock. Yeah, so okay. he's got a lot of removal. He's killing everything. Which actually, Two Divine Verdicts, too. Whew. And then the third game, which we're going to go to over here, the question is, where were the red decks? Well, they are both here. On Lloyd Kurt's side... Lloyd is blue-red. Um, he's got two coordinated assaults, two arena athletes. Looks like he's he's got three crackling triton, uh, two vapor cans, two wave crash tritons as well. So he's a very very aggressive deck taking the heroic approach. All right, and then Eric Smith is playing. He was originally a red white deck. He has now looks like he's boarded in green. I'm not sure what for. He does not have any green cards. Well, that, that's white. Okay, he's red white. Sorry, he's still red white. I thought that was a forest. Um, yeah, he's a red white deck. Fa double Phalanx leader. He's he's a heroic deck. For yeah, the he's a heroic part. deck, and he has an Elspeth, uh, which is the scary part because we saw the Elspeth yet, um, the last round be able to take not one but both of his games. So the nice thing about his red white deck is that most red white decks don't have a lot of staying power, but if he does get to the late game, uh, just a planeswalker. Yeah, just a planeswalker. Yeah, I'm being modest. But for this game, we've seen a really quick start from Lloyd Kurth. He dropped Eric down to 16 and still kind of trying to keep keep pressure on him. He's got his Minotaur Skullcracker and then even had a Voyage End there. So another Minotaur. Uh, I don't think so. A lightning Strike's going to take care of the Enhanced One. It's a second Lightning Strike from Smith. He has just two. Yeah, I mean, Smith's deck is very, very strong. He's cert Currently, he's about the white mana, and you see he's going to play the 2-2 First Striker, Spear Point, Oriad and pass the turn back, as Kurth is drawing a lot of islands and not enough mountains, yeah, it looks like. This is the classic land screw versus land flood situation. It really favors the land screw player. Mm -hmm. All it takes is one or maybe two lands from Eric Smith, and suddenly his whole land is just all business. Whereas for Lloyd to get an equal amount of business, he has to just top deck spells for the rest of the game. So <laughs> Smith is going to get out from underneath this. Right now, though, he's sitting at 14 life and has a good defense for what's being presented on the board. And as you mentioned, Kurth is just drawing a lot of lands, has another one in his hand. Yeah, he has a Grip Tide in his hand as well. It's You you almost think he'd want to Grip Tide the Oread. He has the Grip Tide and Spark Jolt, so not, not much he can do. He could Grip Tide it and maybe, maybe hope to draw another threat. But uh -huh. he has no game right now, and things are not going to get better as Eric starts to gain a foothold on the board. Yeah, there's a fourth land. And there is the Wingsteed Rider. So now he's got a 2-2 Flyer on the battlefield. Nothing really worth Grip Tiding right now either. The Grip Tide, this is one of the poorer uses for Grip Tide where we're currently at right now. Yeah, it's great when you're ahead for gaining tempo. Um, when you're behind, I mean, it still can, you know, blow out. It still be a good combat trick, so it's, it never is bad, but mm -hmm. it certainly is weaker right now. Kurth's going to offer up the trade. Smith doesn't take it. Of course, Kurth could have some sort of combat trick. He's going to play an island past the turn back. He has another island in his hand. Smith's going to come into the red zone with the rider. Going to knock Kurth down to 18. He's just going to play the 2-2 first striker again. Pass the turn back. Yeah, Spearpoint Aurea doing a really good job of keeping Minotaur Skullcracker at bay. Skull Cleaver at bay. Skull Messer Upper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kurth. All right. So he's just going to fire that I off. I like this line. One damage to Smith. That seems so weak right now, but, you know, he's, he knows how bad things are. Things yeah, he has no action, and he needs it, and he's going to keep the top card of his deck, which means that he found some sort of action. Yep, it's going, it is Ordeal of Perforos. Mm -hmm. This is the first time we've seen an Ordeal get played. I'm really happy to see this. Um, Lloyd, yeah, so 
This is probably the mm. ordeal. Purpose is probably the best ordeal. Unfortunately for Lloyd, he's gonna get blown out here by coordinated assault. Yeah, coordinated assault absolutely destroys everything there. First strike taking over. Lloyd Kurtz gets two for one. And now Aerosmith is in the driver's seat because again, we know that Kurtz just has an island in his hand. Yeah, and Smith has a really straightforward play here. Well, he could have played uh, Observant Al Sayed, Enchanting the Wingsteed Rider. So he's, he's, he has better plays than that even. Uh, he's gonna go ahead. I can't see it past the he glare plays a on here. Stone Shock Giant. Thank you. Yep. That guy's double red, isn't he? Oh, he. Oh, the reds. There's a mountain hiding mm -hmm. on the plane. Um, in the Among the planes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was four and one, but it's three and two. By the way, it's no longer alive. As Rage Porphyros is going to take care of that. Yeah, but here we go. It's Observant Al Sayed on Wings T Rider, making it a six six flying vigilance. Yikes! That's going to be really, really difficult for Curse Deck to be able to deal with. Even if he does, it means that Smith is going to at least get left over with a 2-2 Vigilance in play. I'm not sure what card will help him here. It seems like he's he just can't deal with this. He has an ill-tempered ogre, but he has all he's waiting for his opponent to say attack yeah. with the flyer, and then that's game. You see him holding onto an island, trying to bluff a voyage's end. I think he, Smith may, he, may he consult the teammates here. He draws a Dauntless Onslaught as well. Yeah, sure. Oh, okay. Kill your blocker, just to be sure. Scribe to Scribe the bottom, attack with both, and that is going to do it. So Eric Smith is going to defeat Lloyd Kurth in two very, very fast games to give his team up a match. As we go to Pat, we might go to Pat Node versus Fabiano, Shu versus Walter. Not sure where we're going to move next, but either way, Shu, Fabiano, and Smith up one right now. Yeah. Sitting pretty, too. Battle of the Red Decks, really red-white was able to take out red-blue. Not too surprising. I would think, just based on what the decks are trying to do, it seems to me that the white, red-white deck just is really favored in that kind of matchup. Smith's deck, Smith's deck is absolutely fantastic, too. Really, really good deck. From what I've seen from blue-red decks thus far, not really all that impressive, either. I mean, Kurtz is a very good player, but I mean, th those decks, that the synergies don't really feel there. I don't have the data to back it up, but I can't... I feel like blue-red decks have been doing dismal on camera today. Um, you know, we've seen aggro decks like this one, and they seem to be, like, the worst color combination of the aggro decks we've seen. We've also seen... Uh, what I've called blue-red control, which is basically removal and chimeras, mm -hmm. and that deck has also been underperforming. Yeah, we I'm saw not... Alexander Hayne with that in round two, and right. you know, he just got ran down pretty badly uh, by, by well, Swatkins. He, well, he had a, he faced against a black deck, and despite the fact that he had removal and chimeras, he actually wasn't able to deal with. Like black was better at the late game. Yeah. So Fabiano and Pat Node is what we're going to be moving to. I think we, no, excuse me, we are on Fabiano and Pat Node right now. You see a Night Howler going to come into play for Fabiano again. Gerard down one, again. One one at the moment. There's a Horizon Chimera in the graveyard, but that's actually it. Oh. Give it time. Give oh, it time, I know what they figure. <laughs> now the question is, what, what if Pat Noe just raised dead to the Chimera? That'd be sweet. That would found, be awkward. Yeah. I, had not, like, I, Farika, I had not considered Farika's that. Mender getting back, uh, getting back guy. Yeah? Oh, that, that'd be pretty good here, right? Farika's Mender, you know, needs more value attached. Matches <laughs> to one, it needs to be a three for one. Let's see what Pat Noe's going to come up with here again. He even has the black mana, as you mentioned, for the Mender, which I don't think he has at this point. And we see Horizon Scholar. Scry 2. I, don't, I think he doesn't like it. I mean, at least the land he probably land doesn't like. Land Opaline Unicorn with yeah. two cards. Ooh, he's going to keep one. Probably going to keep the land. If I, I mean, it can't be the Unicorn. It's got to be the land. If he has some monstrous monstrosity cards in his hand, that seems reasonable. Um, Gerard's Eternal Phalanx is doing a great job of gumming up the ground right now. Uh, what's unfortunate for Gerard is that the ground isn't where the threat is. Yeah. The skies are where he needs to be. He's going to give this... Uh, he's going to make it so the Phalanx can attack. Pay two mana, make or remove the defender. You should know, with the, it looks like he's going to Pat Node's in a commanding lead. I guess we should point out that Pat Node is down to 11. It looks like Gerard's made a lot of progress with those return phalanxes. Um, he also has Borgin Gainsay, which was used to counter the Horizon kind of huh? Gotta love those self-help, those self-hate card cycle that they put in. I really like a lot. Dark Betrayal, uh, Gainsay, I like all the, the cycle yeah, here. Yeah, I, I particularly am excited about, the, about uh, Glare of Heresy. Likewise. Not so much about Hunt the Hunter. That, eh, eh. yeah, yeah, it's kind of meh. Well, I mean, these are cards that can see playing constructed, and that's one that probably. But it can kill Tarmogoyf. Yes. With your own Tarmogoyf. Yes, it can. Had Always. You, had you considered that? I had not. <laughs> that's the uh, that's the one I get you a lot. Just like death mark the Tarmogoyf. Yeah, I would much rather do that. Yes. There are cleaner answers. You're correct. Swords. Oh, yeah, hey, easy, easy. That's okay, way that's too good. That's, that's way too good. That's a lot of life. Take a look at the top. 
Bam. Well, it does not seem to matter here where this game's going. These guys did not mess around at all. Team Fabiano has won this match. Curtis Shu, Eric Smith, Gerard Fabiano, Shu and Smith. Minutes in. Yeah, they did not waste any time in dispatching Walter Pat noting Kurth at all. And again, if you guys saw the last match, I'm and then this one, <laughs> and second gain say here from Fabiano. <laughs> Shipbreaker Kraken. Their Ooh. decks are great. They have Love great decks. Um, I mean, I like the, just the placement of this match has been fabulous. If you've been noticing, um, we're probably breaking a record here for words per minute on air. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just about that, following these matches was, whoa, okay, about seven things happened in the last ten seconds. Um, it's kind of undefenders guys, swinging them all in. It's got black black up. What's going on here? Uh, Freakas cures. Drabble. It's not actually a cure. Ooh. All right, yep, there's a cure to take care of. Actually, no, it's, it's not actually a cure. Are you sure? No, it's not. Okay. Freakas lying. Yeah, Night Howler. This is a 2 2 because he gains say two -two on, the, uh, the, yep. on the on the shipbreak rack. And now it's a 4 4. Yep. I told you to get bigger, but you agreed with me, so we have nothing to argue about. Yep. Damn. Thank God. I still thought the Freak as Mender would have been a really sweet play. Yeah, that would have been awesome. Whoa, what? Like, one of those things where I'd look at my opponent and be like, what would be the worst card for me to play right now? <laughs> <laughs> Can you figure it out? And they would like, go, uh, uh, I don't know. I'd be like, this. And then like, be like, oh, God. Like, are they, like, Spark Jolt? It's like, no, way worse. Way worse. Way worse. worse. <laughs> uh, so it's time to feed. He feeds on the return. Phalanx gains three off the horizon. Scholar. Night Howler gets bigger. Did George just point out that his Howler got bigger? I think he did. He doesn't have to do that. I know he doesn't, but he's a nice guy. That's very sportsmanlike. Almost to the point where I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, all right. Psh. All right, right. Correctly knows he should pre-combat sip of Emlock. No, nope, make his guy bigger. Six, yep. six. Omen Speaker, do you have any interest? I swing is that, yeah, well, I mean, he better. Fat knows down to three, yeah. so I, I think Omen Speaker's interested in a chump block. Yep, and there it goes. And Night Howler, a little bit bigger as Pat Node's gonna untap. He's gonna draw. He has Thassa's bounty. That's not very helpful right now. There's this humongous rat. It's a rat, it's a bloody, yeah, rat in play. Tapping mana. All right. Six He's of it. Leading up two blue. Milling, milling who? Draw milling three cards, mill three. Oh gosh, that's. A Freakus Cure, a Disciple of Phoenix, a Swamp, now the Night Howler's even bigger. And? He Cursed the Swines the Night Wow, Howler. all right. I mean, that'll keep him alive, so you can't really hate it. It is exiled, so it's going to have to go, yep, and Gerard does remove it. Jeez. Uh -huh, his own Scholar of Horizons. All to the bottom, yuck, no thank so you. So Gerard's just mono good cards. Yes, his like. deck okay. is just all good cards. It's absolutely fantastic blue-black deck. And right. Pat Note is going to concede the game. So Fabiano's going to even it up. We'll see if they're going to end up playing the third and final game or not. I wouldn't be surprised if they if they wouldn't so Gerard that they can get a little break. But pro It's probably the kind of player who, if his opponent asks to play it, will play it. Yeah. It looks like they don't see a reason. Yep, and I think they are going to pack it up, pack it in. Let me begin. So either way, Fabiano, Shu, and Smith are going to win this match in very, very impressive fashion. A tough loss here for Kurth, Pat Note, and Walter at this point in the tournament. Yeah, they were just losing playing for top four. Loss. Yep. Not the best time to do it, but.